thank you all for being here with me. It's not easy to come up. Uh, I still have butterflies in my stomach, <laughs> even, after, even after many times that I've done this. But anyway, this is a, a very good time that we have together. Uh, I, Sister Jennifer actually mentioned to me that uh, I should be sharing today. Now, the thing about sharing is that there's just so much to share. So in my, in my mind, the only way for me to share is to actually put the sharing in context. And that would be about work, uh, how I have actually discovered God in work, and how I have actually uh, basically grew, out, grew as a Christian uh, during, during the time that I've worked I've work in Hong Kong. Now, I would assume every one of us here have come to Hong Kong to work. I mean, except those who were born here, of course. So if you are in Hong Kong and you're working, raise your hand. There. So when I came here, <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> that was 30 plus years ago. I just graduated from university. And uh, as you may see, that's uh, probably some of you were not were not born yet during the time that this was taken. Anyway, I was thinking even of actually putting a picture with a ponytail on my hair. <laughs> my hair was longer than Julius. No, just kidding. <laughs> but yes, I did. Okay, so, so much about it. Let's go back. <laughs> so the reason why we're here in Hong Kong is most of us have come here to, to work. Uh, prior to me coming here, as you may have seen, I was very much involved with the youth fellowship. I was very much involved with the church. I was very much involved with the church that we were able to find an, a Christian organization in the university. So in short, my heart was burning inside to become a full-time minister, thinking, oh, maybe this is the best way for me to carry on with my faith and to serve God. But the direction changed. After graduation, a few months after, a friend of mine, who was also a member of the church, Gilmer, actually asked me if I would wanted to come to Hong Kong to work. It wasn't actually uh, 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 a welcome news because I wanted to stay in Manila. I wanted to stay in the Philippines. However, I did not have my passport, and he wanted me to fly right away. Miracles after miracles, I even asking God, I don't want to go. And then here my mom, being a mom, kicked me and pushed me and say, why are you not going to go? It's an opportunity of a lifetime. Gilmer comes around and says, oh, you have your plane ticket. You have your accommodation. You're just going to go for interview. I said, okay, why not? I didn't have a passport. I went on and on and on and was able to get the passport very quickly. When I came here, I only had a week's clothes thinking, oh, I'm just going to have an interview. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to go and see Hong Kong, and I'm going to fly back home to the Philippines and carry on with my full-time ministry. Anyhow, that day I had my interview. My, uh, the boss who interviewed me says, okay, you may start now. <laughs> and I was scratching my head thinking, I only have one week of clothing, and that was November, and it was actually turning winter. So I had summer clothes, I had t-shirt, I had short. It was really crazy. But I started working November 21st, 1991. <laughs> After an interview at 9.30 in the morning at 10 o'clock, I was on the table doing my job. <laughs> so it was actually uh, uh, a weird thing to feel, but it was a culture shock. Okay, just imagine taking the feeling of, I'm just going to be here, just to be able to work just for an interview, turned out to be work, was really, really scary for me. So, but then again, I said, okay, let's carry on. Uh, and prior to coming here, because I was part of the youth, I was encouraging the youth how to actually live a life that is worthy of the gospel and so on and so forth. In my mind, I have this working principle that says, uh, uh, if anyone asks you to walk a mile, Go with them for another mile. And then I was thinking, okay, how is that going to translate in Hong Kong? When I started working, 
thinking, okay, that means that if they work hard, I will work harder. And the thing was, every one of them, after work hour, stayed, we were supposed to leave at half past five. At half past six, everyone's still around, thinking, are they gonna go home? So I said, if they're gonna leave at half past six, one mile, one mile principle will be at least half past seven. Half past seven, they were still around. The sales is there, the counting is there, the designers are there. And I figured, oh no, I'm gonna sleep in the office. So in short, what happened to me was what it made me define in my heart, what's the meaning of one mile, an extra mile principle. Let me carry on, I'm at the lost. So you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, okay, turn the other to him too. And if anyone wants to sue and take your shirt, let him have your coat as, as well. Now, whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. So by learning what it is to be in the situation where I was, it felt like, okay, what would be the right thing to do? So I realized that being in the full-time ministry is actually similar to working in, uh, in the secular world. Now, here's the catch. In full-time ministry, you're working with Christians. It's easier to become a Christian because you're surrounded with Christians. You behave like a Christian, okay? It's easier. But when I started working in the secular world, it was hard. It was harder to even keep Christianity in. It's easy to be an 007 Christian because you are a secret Christian and you will hide behind whatever you're doing. And I realized that if a Christian is in a secular world, there's even more opportunity to actually show who we are as Christians. Now, the environment of a spiritual Christ of the of the full-time ministry is very, very different from the secular world. Uh, as we all know, we have got all kinds of experiences with our employers. We all know we would have all kinds of experiences with our co-employees. There will be experience of politics. There will be experience of cheating. There will be experience of doubt. All sorts of things. And what would keep you in line in faith? That was very hard for me. Now, as I was saying, getting persecuted in work or at work, there are two things you can do at work if you are a Christian. One, keep your faith. Show how you live as a Christian and get persecuted. Two, forget about you're a Christian, flow with the flow, go with them. If they go to the pub, then you go with them, not a problem. If you drink, you drink with them, not a problem, and so on and so forth. That was an easier path for me. Now, what happened is that in all of these things, standing for the Lord was actually very hard. So whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. Have you ever experienced that you are actually working and instead of, instead of having a, uh, a happy heart working, that the heart is really, really heavy with burden? Uh, one thing that made me really fear working in Hong Kong when I first came was my boss. I felt cheated when I came because it felt good that I got over my probation in two weeks' time, thinking, oh, yay, I'm a good working person. Yeah, yeah. They took me out of probation. I should meant to be three months, right? But I was out of probation for two weeks, after two weeks. I didn't know that that was a double-edged sword. Why? That means... I'm stuck with the company, I couldn't resign. And then here's another thing. My boss actually told me, uh, 
since we are taking care of your working visa, if you leave and you resign, then you will have to pay us the lawyer's fee how, uh, and, and how we actually uh, process your visa. So I was stuck. And then after moving forward with, with, with that realization, I experienced the wrath of my boss. I was embarrassed in front of everyone. He would shout at me. He would actually call me by name. You know, I was called Philip Anjai, <laughs> a Filipino boy, because the guy working with me was a Philip Anlo, was a Filipino man. So in short, the way they actually de degraded me with the terminology was something that I wanted to understand about. So most of the time, I would go to the toilet and cry. It was hard. And I was thinking, why would I be here when I can be in the Philippines doing what I love to do? And then my battle cry was, bring me home to the Philippines. And then a verse in Colossians, in fact, this one here, gave me consolation. And it says, that whatever we do, we work at it heartily as for the Lord rather than man. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, it is the Lord Christ whom you serve. This is hard. In the, in the, in the, uh, in the full-time ministry, it probably might translate very easily. But in the work, in the work uh, environment, this is actually quite difficult. Now, after feeling being cheated because of the fine print of my employment, I had no choice but to keep on. What I've done was I've learned to work with my boss. And, you know, him being Chinese, which is a big culture shock for me, and me being Filipino, it, it, the, the disconnect was very big. So... I learned how to work with him. I learned how to work with him the way he spoke, the way he moves, the way he's liking and so on. There was one time I had become, because somehow, somewhere, I gained favor in his eyes. So which was actually uh, uh, something that I couldn't understand. I became his personal librarian. So this guy collects a lot of references about toys, packaging, design, graphics. So in short, every time he needs something, he would find me, uh, Crit, Crit, come here. <laughs> he couldn't actually pronounce my name, Chris. So, <laughs> so Crit, Crit, oh, so I, I would actually rush and say, yes, 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 Mr. Whatever, right? I didn't want to actually say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, he asked me, because I became so close to his, his, uh, his references and his library, he asked me, could you find this uh, foot toys? And I wondered, foot toys? I searched all around the office, all my library, all my things, all my references. I went back, sir, I cannot find the foot toys. No, 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 you continue, you continue, it's, th it's there, it's there. I carried on. I was just there looking for the thing, right? Finally, he said, the one with tomato. <laughs> and I realized he actually meant food, toys. I was looking for toys that look like feet. <laughs> so in a way, I was trying to learn how this guy actually spoke. I was learning who my boss was. And then I became closer to him to the point where I knew how he worked. I knew how he worked that it wasn't hard anymore. Because I tried to work forcing myself into the culture, but that, wasn't, that was actually quite difficult. But when I started working with him to understand him as a person, then I tried to figure out, oh, so these are where he gets, uh, he gets pleased. Sometimes we're supposed to work from Monday to Friday and Saturday half a day.
But I would stay longer than anyone else because I wanted to fix my things. Because I've got so many work, I've got to fix my things on a Saturday. He comes around and says, What are you doing? But it was a Saturday. I was supposed to be my time, right? What are you doing? And then I'll say, I'm just fixing my things. Okay, and then he would go. But I didn't know he was actually observing. This is the miracle of work. You don't even know how people are actually functioning in their hearts. We as individuals, we cannot reach the hearts of people. It's only the Holy Spirit. So at that time when I was actually working in that manner, I was also praying in my heart, Lord, I hope I'm not working for the glory of men, but for the glory of you who have called me in this. But even then, I was still confused whether I would stay here in Hong Kong or not. So all in all, all of these Bible verses kept me, uh, kept me going. One of them is this. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. If service, in his serving. Or he who teaches, in his teaching. Or he who exhorts, in his exhortation. He who gives with liberal liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. When we were... Uh, when when we, we, were, we were holding Bible study uh, in Stanley a long time ago, and I have had many experiences with, uh, with Filipinas, with, with uh, my kababayan, because only because a lot of them would actually gather in the Bible study and would complain about our own employers. They would say, oh, my employer is this, my employer is that. And some of these people have got their degrees, their degree holders, okay? So they come again and say, they would cry and they would say, why am I here? I'm supposed to have been educated in this way or this manner. And then I would say, you know, God has called us where we are at the moment. It is only where we are where the Lord will bless us. I wanted so much to go back home. I asked God, I said, I'm going to go back home. And then lo and behold, God met me in my prayer time and saying, look at Abraham. Abraham was a nomad. He went around. But being a nomad, he was always with God. And God was always with him. And God was just saying, if you are going back home and my presence is not with you, it doesn't matter where you are. If you are where you are right now, even as... Even as in my Bible study, it was saying, even as a domestic helper, if God has called you to be in this situation, then seek the presence of the Lord. That is exactly what happened to me. I wanted so much to go back home, but God has met me and said, if you are going to going back home and my presence isn't there, it's not going to work. So with that kind of thinking, I felt more at peace, and I felt like, we should move on with my life. And then, so I did. One time, on my way back home, on the minibus, I got a prompting from, from the Lord and asked me to resign. Uh, it was quite weird because I have had a, an instance of argument with the owner of my, com of, of my boss, the son, and it felt like it was not going to work between me and him. So I sought the Lord and said, Lord, am I going to work here or not? And then the simple answer was, you should resign on Monday. And it was a Saturday. So that was crazy. But only because the prompting of the Holy Spirit was strong. Now, your personal encounter with God is yours. I cannot say that my personal encounter with the Lord will be your personal encounter with God. But as Christians, we should learn to be able to have these encounters, to have this time where you'll be, be, you'll be surprised that God, out of the blue, has actually spoken to you on a something that you need to do. And I acted on it. Now, uh, 
it was hard because every day was like uh, entering a narrow door. You know, in Genesis, uh, speaking of being cheated, uh, Jacob, in his workplace, wanted to work for Rachel. He's Laban, saying, okay, what do you want? And then Laban, Laban was asking, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And then Jacob says, oh, I'm going to work for you for seven years so I can marry Rachel, your daughter. So Jacob was happy, working, working, working. Seven years, it flew. And the Bible says, because he loved Rachel, and that time flew, it was really easy. Then lo and behold, when they got married, they comes out of the, the, the meeting room, and it wasn't Rachel. It was actually Leah. So look at the surprise of Jacob having that kind of situation. That was a big surprise for him. But what did he do? He said, I will work for another seven years for Rachel. So the working time and the working condition how can you work in an environment where you were cheated for seven years, making you believe that you're going to get what you're promised for, and then it didn't turn out to become like that? You, you know the conflict of within the working environment? Would I stay? Will I not stay? Will I stay? Will I not stay? That is really hard. So with Jacob, he carried on for another seven years. But you know, God carried on with him with wisdom that only came from the Lord himself. What did he do? He separated the goats, the sheep, and everything, the herd of Laban on one side and his on the other side. His was all spotted and striped. And what about Laban did not have any spot, did not have any stripe. So anything that actually came out without stripe, then that would be coming from Laban. And then when he did that, his flock actually grew. Then it was time for him to leave. And he said, to Laban, let me go now. I have my family with me. So he had Rachel, he had Leah, he had a lot of children. The tribe of Israel was actually with him. And as we can see, these are some of the things that uh, uh, was hard for during the time of uh, the Bible when 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 slaves actually get bought, it's actually hard for people to, uh, it, it's a difficult life for slaves in, in the Bible because they are owned. Now, my, my exhortation to, to the Bible study before was, you may be working with your employer, but you're not a slave. Okay. But they said, no, Brother Chris, but I perform like a slave. And then they go around and then they cry and then I just go back to the Philippines. Sometimes it's that kind of feeling. So when I encouraged them, I said the only way for us to carry on just like Jacob did was to stay put, learn from whatever you can learn, and then move forward. So when I made the decision to move, uh, it was very difficult because I did not know where I was going. I did not have a house, but I moved and made my resignation. And then... On that resignation, I've met Keith Moody. Sir. <laughs> and my wife found me. <laughs> Sorry, the other way around. <laughs> so th that was an open opportunity for us to be brought together. Uh, and I did not know that with that decision I made on the bus to just resign made me where I am right now. It's mind-boggling, but to think about what happened to Jacob, what happened to Leah, what happened to Rachel, it's also mind-boggling. Then Joseph came about. We'll talk about Jacob a little later. I'm running out of time. Now, since I've resigned and since I've moved on, after all the pain and suffering I've encountered with my first employment, somehow the Lord vindicated me. I ended up with work that made it possible for me to expand my, my horizon and learn more about so many things. Without, without uh, uh, bragging anything 
or uh, or just showing you that the Lord is there trying to fulfill His purpose in your life. This is one of the projects that I've done. Uh, only because I've resigned, only because the Lord has led me to, 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 to another direction. And I was able to actually come in a situation where I was able to make a project in this scale. This is a worldwide implementation of Caltex from Asia Pacific to South Africa to Australia and so on. And when I was here on the top trying to measure the, the Caltex logo, it was like very close to Jesus. I could actually reach him. But this is actually around 30, 30 meters up the, up the ground. So it, I've, I've said, Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that, that you've given me. And, you know, even during the time that you are actually in an employment, it feels like you can never be secure. You can never be secure. But you know what happened to this company? It folded after, being, after having a very big project because of somehow, because of some problems, it folded. But... The Lord, as I said, Lord, you brought me out of Egypt, and now I'm just here to die. What am I going to do? So that was the kind of feeling I had. So prior to it completely folding down, there was another company up two floors above us. With the wisdom of the Lord that he has given to Jacob, he has given me the wisdom. And I went up, I gave my resume, and then they called me back and say, we, we would like to work with you. And with that time, I was able to work on the MTR project. This was the biggest work so far that I've contributed in Hong Kong. Uh, I was able, given the chance to design and to uh, rework the MTR system map. So anything you do, uh, if you see a, a line map on the, on the platform screen doors, if you see a vertical line, th th those were all part of parcel of a, a system that we work together with the team and you know it, it, it's, it, it was a really uh, a vindication from the Lord but then again as the Lord will bring you to situation we will you will trust him with all of your heart this project ended and I was about again to say Lord where am I gonna go Constantly, the Lord will bring you in situations where you will be down on your knees asking for him to help you. You know, Brother Stephen actually showed uh, Romans 28 a while ago. I'm jumping, on, I'm jumping ahead, but let me show you the, the scripture. It says here, in the same way, the Spirit also helps us our weakness. For we do not know how to pray, or we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. You know, in verse 26, when the Lord said, He knows our weaknesses. You know, all throughout this time that I've been working, I've been, there were very, very hard times. And there were very, there were many occasions that I have actually shown my weaknesses as a Christian. But when I read the verse and says, God knows your weaknesses, it made me realize even if I am where I am, even if I have failed God so many times, the Lord knows my weaknesses. And by so doing, the groanings of my heart that cannot be expressed with words would always be there. You know, sometimes you pray and you don't know what to pray for. You sometimes you just pray and sit down with the Lord and say, I don't know what to pray for because it was just a deep feeling of, we don't have words to express. When that happens, it's the Holy Spirit interceding for us. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And hear what it is, Romans 8.28. We always quote this, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God. You know, even in the weaknesses that we have experienced, even in the failings, even in those things that we have hurt God, even if we mess our lives up, because of Romans 8.28, he brings us back and says, and we know that God, who knows our weaknesses and our failings, causes all things to work together for good because we love him to those who are called according to his purpose. So the purpose of actually being in the workplace is a full-time ministry. 
you see the full-time work as something that God has kept you and for you to do. And from then on, uh, to, to, to fast forward, after all of this, after failing and so on, uh, God has prompted us to st start up our own company. It was a, a, a nightmare to, to start a, 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 your own company because I am not a businessman. I am an artist. I'm a designer. I don't, have an, I don't know anything about running a business. And then my wife, of course, is the one who uh, running that for us. Uh, so we're complementary. I'm the neck. I'm the head, and she's the neck. <laughs> and the neck turns the head <laughs> all the time. <laughs> she's my director, and she directs me. <laughs> so I realize that everything that we do, we need to understand that there's always worship in our work. You just don't work because for the sake of working. You work and include worship in the act of working. You know when, uh, when Abel and Cain uh, offered to Jesus, offered to God, uh, let me read from, I don't think I have it here, but it says here, so it came about in the course of time that Cain brought the uh, offering to the Lord from the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought an offering from the firstborn of his flock and from their fat portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Abel was working with worship. Abel was offering with worship. And Cain was offering with whatever is left over, I will give it to the Lord. And God did not appreciate that. So in pain, in suffering, as long as there is worship, the Lord will vindicate us. The Lord will show his work to us. The daily miracles that we have encountered because of putting up our own company was just tremendous. I mean, it was such a mind-boggling. There was one time we were working with Body Shop, and for some reason, I missed a typo error. And we printed 30,000 bags, and there was a typo error. And naturally, I was like, oh, no! <laughs> I was like, I was crying because I just started the company and I messed up thinking 30,000 bags will be printed on these thousands and thousands of dollars. That was too much. But you know, lo and behold, I talked to the client and said, we, I think we have missed, <laughs> I repackaged it. <laughs> I think we've missed something and we have a typo error on the printing. He turned around and said, Okay, that's all right. And that blew me away. We should have checked it too, Chris. That blew me away, thinking that saved me a lot. To begin with, I did not know how that client would react. I did not know how the design manager would react. They could have blamed it on me, on us, and they could have asked us to pay for the printing. But they did not. Who could that be except God? Who could that be who reaches to the inmost the hearts of our clients and of our employees, of our employers? Who would that be except the Lord? So, in the same way when Joseph, uh, serving his master Potiphar, he got into trouble because of the wife. So a wife can also be in trouble, you know. So what happened was that the, the wife m made some nasty moves on Joseph. So nasty that Joseph ended up in prison. So what did Joseph do? Cry, blame God because he's been good. After what I've done for you, God, now I'm in prison. No, the point was when Joseph, see, you can see, I'm getting ahead of myself, but God is working in the background. You don't even know that. He was actually asked to be in prison for him to have an opportunity to meet the cupbearer. 
who was also in prison because he did something that the Pharaoh actually didn't like. And he met the guy, he interpreted the dream, he remembered Joseph, and the rest, what? Is Israel, is Egypt. So even if you are caught in a very difficult situation, God can bring it, turn it around 180 degrees and make it for you. When it says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. So all in all, after starting springtime design, which is which, uh, it's a plug. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be a plug. Anyway, that's how we called our company, Springtime. Uh, it wasn't easy because I thought I was over, you know, not having an employment because I've got work to do. It isn't like that. The point is, it was even harder. There were many times that we don't have, we don't have clients. We don't have, uh, we have cash flow needs and we need to fulfill the cash flow needs. And then time and again, I have found that the toilet in the office, as my prayer closet, is an easy place to go and pour your heart out to the Lord. And God, in all his mercies, in all his goodness, has provided for us and has given us all the things that only God would have thought about how to provide for us. And we, we were blessed to have worked with uh, Godiva. We were blessed to have worked with Bank of China in Hong Kong. And we were blessed to have worked with AIA. All of these blessings come one miracle on a daily basis. Uh, even if you don't know it, there are miracles and miracles happening in our lives. It will not be complete if I will not share with you today the miracles that happened to my arm. When I got in an accident and I broke my arm, uh, it only became clear that on the severity of my accident when I found out how fractured my arm became. This is my arm on that right side when I had my accident. That's my arm when they tried to align it. And that's my arm now that I've got my fixation. Okay, It will not be complete to say the miracles that I encounter on a daily basis if I will not show this because I researched what would it take to break a bone. It would take hundreds of pressure per inch. And to break it this way, it would have been much more. If my arm did not receive the breakage of my fall, it would have been my head. And my head absorbed very little of the impact of my fall. Only God knows what it is. Only God can make what it is. It, it may have looked really severe. It's comminuted so much that even the doctor said, this is the first time we've seen something like this in Hong Kong, in the hospital where I was. It was really bad. But then again, as I have realized how the Lord held me, I cannot complain because God has created a miracle in my work and in my walk. The one who is faithful in very little things is also faithful in much. And the one who is unrighteous in a very little thing is also unrighteous in much. So however little your work is, however little you think your work is, work at it with worship. Work at it with, uh, with enduring desire to please God, not men. And finally, I would like to exhort us that we should not fear, for God is with us. We should not be dismayed, for he is our God. He will strengthen us and help us and will uphold us with his righteous right hand. I hope this sharing has actually given you some insight on my life and how Janice and I have uh, struggled 
and sought the Lord in many ways. There were many days we were uh, we would we would spend time together in prayer, but there were many times when you're alone with God that the only way to reach out to the Lord is to really cry in worship. And sometimes crying before God, you don't have to say anything. God knows what it is. And uh, the Lord has provided, and the Lord will provide. The Lord provided before, and he will provide in the future. And our, our work with God as a ministry is that uh, uh, we need to continue with the calling that we have. You know, right now that I'm an employer, somehow it's hard to be the other way around. Before I'm an employee, I was actually trying to please my, 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 my boss, uh, thinking, okay, this is meant to be uh, uh, something that I need to, to do as a Christian. Now that I'm employing people, it feels like I have become my boss. I have become so mean. I have become like, why are they going home at 6 o'clock? Aren't they supposed to stay till 9 o'clock? And then Janice, who's actually uh, the one who would turn my head <laughs> and strike a balance and says, and would say, you're not supposed to work with them like that nowadays, especially with the young guys. Uh, there are different ways of working. And you work like a horse, it doesn't mean that they will work like a horse. Okay, so, but one thing that I have learned in my walk with the Lord is that as an employer, I know my designers will leave me. I know somehow after a few years with us, they would leave. But I have received a mandate from God that says, if they leave, make them leave better people. Make them leave better person. So sometimes it's hard to babysit our designers to the point where you tell them what to do. You explain to them like a teacher. But when they leave you, they leave your company as, a better, in, as better individuals. They may not be Christians, but they remember that when you, they have left your place, they have left the place with an impression of who God is in your life. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the time you have given us, O oh God, to come before your throne in worship. Father, our time with you, our work, our time that we spend here, Lord Jesus, to provide for our families. Lord, we are here because of your calling. Father, we are here because you have given us the strength, O oh Lord, to carry on with the calling that you have given us. As we give you praise and as we give you glory, let us not forget, O oh Jesus, the promises that you have for us. And we will all just give back all the praise and the glory to you. You work behind the scenes. You are our God. You are our sovereign Lord. You have proven yourself to us time and again. And for this, Lord God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. be standing here some of you knew how I was struggling I almost left Hong Kong for Saudi for leaving a camp because of the situation I was going through I got another job in some other company but I'm still with the same company I actually resigned but it was just God's plan and will for me to be in that situation that I could humble myself that's the biggest humble I've had in my career 
that I could actually resign and stay with the same company um, with today. When I was young, when I resigned, I'm done. But I, I'm really grateful, and I think the message that you've, you've shared today is still useful to me, and I hope as we go this week, we'll learn from it, we'll be able to use it, and remember some of the good things that he has, practical things that he has said. And so thank you for that message. It was really great. Thank you, and God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.